How does RTI differ from previous approaches to providing interventions? So when the terminology of RTI came out and the new reauthorization of IDEA, I think what a lot of schools, districts um, may have done is, is just taken what they were originally doing for uh, what we would consider peripheral or a process of providing interventions prior to students going into special ed and renamed it RTI. And when you really look at what RTI is, it, it, it's more of a preventative framework as opposed to a pre-referral, and that that's really is the big difference. In a pre-referral strategy, what we see is we wait till a student fails in some way, is recognized as, as failing, is referred to a team, folks try to come up with an intervention that will in a sense remediate that deficit um, before we make a referral to special ed. And in RTI, we're really looking at a preventative framework. And we use what we refer to as screening tools to predict who may be at risk for failure as opposed to waiting until a kid fails before they are referred. And in a, um, a preventative model, those students who are screened and who might be at risk for per, poor learning outcomes then receive interventions to prevent them from having struggles in the future. And those students who then um, don't respond to the highly qualified or high, um, highly effective interventions may be referred to special ed. Um, I often get questions about, well, is it is RTI really just a um, intervention framework and when we talk about RTI at the RTI Center we're looking at it as a um, school-wide um, prevention framework so core instruction is really part of that prevention and all students should have access to that um, and those students who are struggling or who who may be at risk of struggling uh, are identified through those screening tools that are reliable and valid um, in an effective preventative um, RTI framework, what you would end up seeing is that students who um, are struggling may start moving through the tiers in an upward fashion, but the majority of those students, if their intervention at secondary and tertiary are effective, would then move to less intensive tiers. And this is very different from a pre-referral model in which students tend to take a one-way street up. So they've uh, are no longer um, performing at a rate that we would expect them, so then we intervene and then they may be referred, but very few of those in a pre-referral model actually move back down to less intensive tiers. And that to me is what really separates RTI as a prevention framework versus our um, past traditional um, pre-referral model. And one of the things that often makes it clear if people are using a pre-referral pre -referral versus a prevention framework is that they'll use things like, oh, I RTI'd this kid or that's an RTI student. But if you think about RTI as a prevention framework in which core is part of that prevention framework, then in a sense all students are RTI kids. And if you're just looking at RTI as an intervention only, um, then it may really be that you're you're addressing deficits as opposed to intervening early to prevent those poor learning outcomes. And if you think about special ed, a lot of people mistake RTI as preventing special ed. And in reality, um, special ed is part of this larger prevention model. And so those students um, who were I mean, really the purpose of school is to prepare students for post-secondary outcomes. In kindergarten, we're preparing them for elementary and elementary for middle school. And we want to adequately prepare them, not only for state tests, but this bigger success in school. And so part of uh, what special ed's role is, is to prevent those students from experiencing struggles that they may have, got, may have had had they not had special. So I think really that the, the idea that RTI is not really just another name for a pre-referral model and instead is this larger school-wide prevention model is really the key um, to making sure that students, all students are successful.